For the last several months, you've probably seen me pushing a cart full of tools and equipment around Tri-Valley High School here and wondered what I've been working on. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the production control room. This room's been reconfigured with a new computer for audio and video editing, which we'll tell you a little bit more about here as we get into our video. Some of the older equipment that was already here has been reconfigured and repaired in order to simplify it and to uh, make sure that everything is working correctly on it. Last of all, our second of the new computers, which is our lighting and presentation computer. Lighting and presentation computer is connected to the projector on the stage and is used for running PowerPoints. It also has remote control of the projector on the stage and it also operates our lighting system. There will be a separate video later on to get into more detail on the lighting system and the editing system in here. But for today, we're going to go over some of the basics in terms of how to operate some of the equipment in the room. When you first come in the room to use the equipment, everything's powered off and in the state that it is right now. That way, I learned to put it back in that situation so that we can walk you through the whole process of how to turn things on. Um, first thing you want to do, the power switch for the computer is up here on the top of it and you want to press that in order to start it. There's a white indicator light to let you know that it's running. Let that go ahead and start warming up. In the meantime, over here on the video equipment pod, there is a master power switch up here at the top. A big red button. You want to turn that on. When that comes on, it will energize the equipment in this, and it turns on the equipment for the audio mixer, which you're going to also want to use for anything you're presenting out here today. Once the lighting computer powers up, you'll get a login screen like this one. These computers up here are both off-network machines, which means they do not use your normal login name and password. You'll use a specific account on the machine, which in this case is going to be lighting operator, and we'll, when you need to use it, contact us, we'll give you the password that you need for that account. So, click on lighting operator. Password or bring up the uh, Windows. Now, the setup on this machine, there's dual monitors from this. One of them is fed to the projector, the other one is the control screen here, which is not seen on the projector. The uh, left hand monitor on the, uh, this particular setup always shows what's being fed to the projector so that you can see what's going on. In order to power up the projector, we will come over here to the projector uh, remote control software which has a picture of a projector on it. Double click that with the left mouse button. This software is designed for controlling multiple projectors and in this case it only finds one projector of this type. So we're going to come down here to where it says connect. We've connected to that projector. Now we're going to come up here. We're going to right click to open the menu up and click on control to bring up the remote control screen. We come over here under power, there is an on button. We click that. It will come up and ask us to confirm that we want to turn the projector on. We click OK. And this starts the process of powering up the projector. And you should see that here momentarily. It takes a couple minutes for it to warm up. So that's normal. And there's our projector. Now, the next thing you're going to want to do is we're going to open up Venue Magic, which is the V with the lightning bolt. Venue Magic is our lighting control software. Now, 
you may be thinking, well, I don't really need to use lighting for this. I don't want to mess with that. That's fine. However, what we have found is our robotic lights that we have out here, if they do not see, get a signal from the, com the control unit from the computer, they will go into a demo mode. You've probably seen that at lunchtime once or twice when I've been working up here. They will start randomly projecting images and moving around and so on, and we don't want it doing that while we've got a presentation going on. So we're opening the software just to give it the ability to see the system and put it into a standby mode. Uh, when, the, when those come up, they will see the computer and they'll recognize that they should wait before they do anything, and they won't go into demo. If we wanted to turn on lights, there are buttons on this software for turning on uh, the uh, different lights. We have buttons here for turning on the lights at the front of the stage. We have light buttons for the lights over top of the stage and buttons for both. And if you needed lights, what you would want to do is you would click on uh, the on button for the lights that you need, and when you're done, click the off button for the same set of lights. These are basically scripts that execute to turn the lights on uh, in the proper sequence. Uh, we'll get into a little more detail on that in a separate video over the lighting system because there's a lot more ground to cover with that system. Uh, this software does give us a lot of flexibility, everything from basic lighting control, uh, clear up to doing synchronized light shows, importing MP3s into the software, uh, to uh, synchronize lights to music, and uh, being able to do uh, stuff with it that will let us do some uh, nice stuff for some of our school dances here. We can do some nice light shows to go with it, kind of spice up the, the uh, school dances a little bit that way. We'll get into that in a separate video in terms of how this software works. But for now, we're just going to minimize this screen. Okay, we've got the projector up, and we've got the Venue Magic software up, which means it's now time we can turn on our lighting system and our sound system. And whereas before we had to go backstage and turn it on at the rack, now we have a remote control here in the control room to turn that on. This is the uh, remote control for the Furman power sequencers. And if I reach over and press the black button there, the green light will come on, and that's the signal that is starting the power up process for the sound system. At this point, I can select whatever source I want to that I want to feed to the video projector. If, for example, I wanted to play a DVD, I come over here and hit the DVD player button. And down here on the DVD player, this one's a little bit tricky. There are actually two power switches on it. There is a master power switch here at the bottom that went on. You should see the red standby indicator light right there above it. Normally that should be left on, but a lot of people will turn that off because they don't realize what it is or what it does. The second power switch is the one you normally will have to turn on to activate the DVD player. And when it comes on, you'll see the display light up on it. You can hit your eject button, and you can load your disc into it. Okay, once I press play on the DVD player, start my movie, I can come over here to the soundboard, and there's really only two, three things we need to worry about to speak of on the soundboard. We've got, right here we turn the channel on, this is the video slider right here, turn the channel on, and make sure the stereo button is down, and we can bring our movie up previewed on the control room speakers and the volume for the control room speakers is right here and we can bring up the main speakers so that's how you play a movie Now the thing to remember on that also is that anything that goes through that video selector switch, whether it's the DVD player, or the VCR, or the computer itself, all the sound for that comes up on that same video knob right there. 
Um, so that's where you would need to turn the volume up on that. The other thing is that you'll notice that the left hand monitor on the lighting and control computer always follows what's being fed to the projector screen. So if you don't have a picture on the projector and you do have one on the monitor, you know that the projector is powered off or has malfunctioned somehow. Uh, that makes it a little bit easier for you to troubleshoot that way. Now, if I were running a uh, videotape instead of a DVD, or I wanted to watch uh, cable TV like the March Madness, for an example, uh, basically the process works the same way. Only difference is you're going to be pushing this button over here to bring up the VCR, power on the VCR, and whatever you tune in on the VCR here is what's going to come up on the projector out there. Audio works the same way, it's that same slider that's labeled video, and you make sure that the mute button or the, uh, the audio enable button is on. It's kind of a mute button in reverse, um, but you make sure that's on, you make sure that the ST button is down in order to feed the ST, uh, the stereo bus, which is what we're using for our uh, public address system here, or for our, our speakers out here. Now, if I was wanting to watch a PowerPoint slideshow instead of a video, that's also easy to do. You can close the projector control software for now, just to get it off your screen. The projector will remain on until you reopen the software and shut it back off. Now, if I bring up PowerPoint, and in fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that. I'm just going to open an existing slideshow here just to show you how that works. So I brought up PowerPoint. On my switcher, I'm going to switch back to PC. Which PC is our lighting computer. Uh, there is also an editing computer position in there that has a feed from the video or the audio and video editing software. Uh, in the other computer, in case for some reason you want to show something that's being worked on on that. We have our slideshow up here, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click on the little projector screen down here in the toolbar right next to the size adjustment. That puts us in presentation mode. Now there's a couple of ways you can do slide presentations with PowerPoint in our setup we have here. We have a two screen system. So PowerPoint gives us a control screen on the right screen, and on the left screen is the actual program being presented on the projector. If you have somebody that can assist you with this, that can sit here in the booth and run it for you, um, that would probably be the best way to do it, because when you do that, you have the option of coming over here and advancing your slides, or going back if you've got to go back. It gives you a little more control over it. Uh, you can also see what's next in your slides and if you want to jump to a particular slide you have that option too or if you want to jump back to a particular slide if you don't have a second person available to operate your slides for you there is a remote control for the unit that uh, will reach down here so that you can advance your slides manually the only thing about this one is it's a little difficult to work with if you should accidentally skip a slide and need to go back one uh, it does come in handy for presenter. It also offers a laser pointer that can be used. Uh, you probably can't see that on the screen right there, but it does give you the ability to use that also. When you're finished with your presentation, you'll want to power off the rack equipment in the back first using that switch over on the wall. When you press the button, the green light will go out and it will start the sequence to power down everything in the back. You'll want to reopen the projector remote software. And reconnect to the projector. And click control. Click on the power off button and click OK to confirm that you want to power down the projector. In the meantime, you want to shut the two pods off. The audio pod on the left hand side 
using the red power switch up in the corner if it was turned on. And the audio pod on the right hand side, the red power switch up in the upper right corner on that one also. By now the progress bar on the uh, projector should have gone away and the power off indicator will be green on the projector telling you that it is done. So you can now exit out of that.